Well, in this lab, we deal with the problem of rolling. You've dealt with it in problems. It was on test two. It's chapter eight material, but we haven't done a lab on it. So that's what this lab is. This lab deals with rolling. And specifically, it's actually a culmination of a lot of parts of everything we've done this semester. So this is a great review to start reviewing for your final exam. You've got three objects. You've got a hollow sphere. Why do I mean it's hollow? Well, I mean, there's nothing in it. It's hollow. You've got a hollow hoop and a solid sphere. Now, they're all different masses and they're all different radii. You have to measure all that stuff. How are you going to measure radii? Well, you've got a plumb bob here. I would suggest you use the plumb bob. There's a line around here. Wrap it around, the, the, wrap the string around, and measure the circumference. Use the, find the line on there, find the circumference around, measure it with your tape measure. You get a nice tape measure right here. Measure the circumference and then calculate the radius from there. You might ask, what is circumference? Well, you should know that by now, but you can look it up. Okay. Um, and what's going to happen is, you're going to start with one of these objects, you're going to do all three separately, but you're going to start with one of these objects way up high on that ramp, way up here, know where you're starting it, and you're going to let it go down, it's going to roll down the ramp, it's going to go across this, this uh, stack of paper here that I made to the same height so it's a smooth transition from one to the other, and then it's going to launch off this table. There's two steps to this problem. One is the roll down. Two is the projectile motion. So you've got to do both those problems. Many of you have forgotten how to do the projectile motion. It's been all the way since chapter three. So it's a good time to start reviewing it because you need to know it for the final exam. So let's get started on this lab. After you fill your names into the table, into the, in the name part, you have to fill out this table up here. It asks for two things, mass and radius, that you have to measure. So you'll get the mass from your scale. You'll measure the radius, like I showed you a minute ago. Wrap the string around. Make sure you get it all the way around the circumference. Don't get it around just part of it. Get the whole way around. Lay out your tape measure on the table. Lock it down. So you can measure your string. So measure the circumference, then measure the radius, and then put the radius in here. Uh, make sure, it doesn't add, tell you what units to use. I'll let you figure that out. You might want to use standard units. I think your life will be easier. Then it asks for I equation. What is that talking about? I. That's moment of inertia. We're talking about objects that are spinning and objects that have mass. This is a uh, bocce ball. These things are pretty massive. Okay, so you're gonna write the equation down next. After you have the equation down, you have to, and you have the numbers, now you have to punch them out with your calculator. Calculate the value, punch it out, and fill in this part of the table. This next part on your paper asks you to draw a picture of the situation. Now, to deal with this, we're, we're going to split this up into parts. We're just going to deal with the roll to start with. So you've got a ramp. That's at height h off the table. You should put your ground at the lowest point your object goes for this part of the problem, the rolling part of the problem. The ball starts out up here. You'll have to measure height. You've got a tape measure. Measure it. You'll have to measure the height. <clears throat> and then the ball is going to roll down here. When it gets down here, two things are going to be happening. It's going to be moving and it's going to be rolling. You have to deal with both of those. So it says draw a picture of the ramp and label the energy at the initial value, uh, sorry, at the initial and final locations. Here's the initial location. What kind of energy is there? 
Here's the final location. What kind of energy is here? I'll let you figure that out. Then the next question says, what method will you use? Which method deals with initial and final energies? Third question, what will be the three equations that describe the speed at the bottom of the ramp? Okay, now, what I mean by that is I'm looking for the speed of the solid sphere or the speed of the hollow sphere or the speed of the hoop. You have to find all three of those equations and I'm looking for blah 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 an equation here. I don't want numbers, an equation. You've got to do some algebra to figure this out using that method that you identified in the second question. So you're going to find a method, then work it out to find these three equations. And I'll let you find those equations. And now the next question it says find the height from which your object will roll. Well, just break out your tape measure and measure it. I'll show you how to do that here. What your height is depends on where your ground is. Well, where's the lowest point your ball goes in the rolling portion of this lab? Well, the lowest point it goes is to the top of this table, ta uh, paper here. And so what you want is the height from the top of the paper to the top of the board. How are you going to do that? Well, you have to do it in two steps. Start by measuring the height of the board. Measure it from the tabletop to the top of the board right there. Second step, come over here and measure the height of the paper. Once you have both of those measurements, find the difference between them and that will be the height that the ball rolls down from. The height in the initial position. The next part of the lab has you fill in the launch velocities. Notice you're not measuring a launch, launch velocity, you're calculating what you expect the launch velocity to be. This is a prediction. If all that you've learned in physics is true, this will be the speed that it launches off the table with. Now, once you've calculated that, the three values, turn over the page, and now it says, draw a picture of the launch problem. Well, this is the next, this is step two in this problem. So now, you've got a table that drops off and you've got a ball moving that way. Which way? That way. Is it slightly up? Is it slightly down? Uh, that way. I'll let you figure out what that means. Now, it's then going to, it's going to launch off the table and it's going to its motion is going to form the shape of a parabola. Ah, that's important. That's a key word. When you see that, when you see that motion of a parabola, it helps if you say it weird like that. Parabola. When you see that motion, you can't, that, that is not a triangle. That's a parabola. That motion says, ah, projectile motion. That's from chapter three. You've got to break the motion down into the x and y components. The motion has to be broken down into the x equations and the y equations. Check back in your notes. There's only one equation you can use here. And there's three equations that you can use here, but one is the one we, we really use all the time. Modify them for x and y. We've done this about a hundred times. I'll let you step through that. Look back in your notes. We've covered it in class multiple times. <clears throat> it was also on test one. And we covered it in there too, so you can probably find a lecture on it. Uh, I know we covered it when we went over the... Uh, uh, you can find a lecture on it. We've done it in our class multiple times. So you can look back at chapter three lectures, or you can look back at the test one go over. All this is on the web. <clears throat> okay, so the next step here is solve this 2D projectile motion problem for the three landing positions of the three objects. Here's what I'm looking for. X for the 
solid sphere is equal to some equation. You've got to calculate that. Using this information over here, using what you know about this problem, how far does it fall? It falls h from the top of your paper to the floor. h, capital H this time. It was lowercase h last time. That's your height that you have to work with. <coughs> Let me just point this out. Which way is it going? In the y direction? Down. That's important when you're figuring this out. It goes down. You're going to come up with three equations. x for a solid sphere. So, so that's this. x from here to here. Where is it going to land? How far from the edge of the table is it going to land? That's what you have to calculate. And now you've got to do x for a hollow uh, for a, for a what's, what's the other one? Solid sphere? Yeah, hollow sphere. And x for a hoop. And I think when you work this out, you'll probably if you use the equation on the equation sheet, this is actually delta x. And that's okay. If you consider the initial position zero, you can call it x or delta x. Next piece is to measure the height from the top of the paper to the floor. Use your tape measure, measure it to the maximum, maximize the precision of your tool. You are obliged to do so. So measure the height and then you've got the equations. Plug it in, find delta x. That's where you can't do this without me. So come and find me before you launch it. Put your paper, you've got, you've got these nice targets here. You've got three targets, one for each. A target for the hoop, a target for the disc, uh, for the hollow sphere, and the solid sphere. One target for each. Lay it out on the, measure it out on the ground, where you're going to put it. Oh, wait, where's x equals zero? Let me show you that. To find the initial position, Get yourself a blank piece of paper. Don't steal it from your stack here. Those will clamp down. They've got to be the same height as the board. Don't take that paper. Leave it there. Get another one from the instructor's table over there. Get one piece of paper and tape it down to the floor so it doesn't move. And once you've got it taped, drop a plumb bob. You remember doing this the first week from the top of the table. And mark your initial position. Mark it with a pencil and, and mark that as your x equals zero spot. Now, to calculate, to find your x final, now use your tape measure, which I left it all the way over here. Take your tape measure and put it on the x that you just measured right there. And then put your target. right under the spot where you've calculated that it's going to land. So the center of the target goes at the spot where you predict it's going to land. Your prediction is a calculation that you've already made. I got you started, barely, on the board. You need to figure out the rest of it. And there you go. That's the lab. Do it for the solid sphere, the hollow sphere, and the hoop. Three targets, 30 points. Unless you miss. Okay, <coughs> that's your lab. I hope this helps, and I'll see you on Tuesday.